There's like a lot of technology going on and it was the trip of a lifetime. Uh, I had to prioritize what was important to me. If you set yourself up right, you can just do that every single day. Hi, my name is James. Uh, this is my van, Vincent, and I want to show you everything that I built. I wanted essentially uh, a small house full kitchen. Um, so that's what I have here. Um, wanted a nice open spot to do things instead of like multiple little ones. I always wanted walnut countertops like ever since I was growing up. Uh, so I finally got to have these custom made. And then I have propane stove and oven combo. I was on the fence about the oven. I haven't really used it, but I figured uh, if I didn't have it and wanted it, I would be regretting it later. As far as my cabinets go, it was my first time ever woodworking. So it was a very much learn as you go. So upper cabinets, pretty traditional. I have like my coffee making stuff and then larger food items over here, my spices, oils, etc., like that. And then for my lower cabinets, just everything fit exactly where it needs to be, organized in a way that makes sense personally. Currently in my whole uh, water system, I don't have a good gray water tank yet. Because <laughs> um, when you build, you kind of do what you have to to get on the road. And I got to a point where I didn't have time to drill a hole in the floor and undermount a tank. So I have a five gallon tank underneath my sink. So manual, but it works. So as far as my water system goes, I have a 32 gallon water tank in the back that goes over the wheel well, and then a five gallon gray water tank. And then I do have an electric hot water heater. Um, it's one of the Bosch um, hot water heaters that charges or that heats over 120 volt uh, that usually I do when I drive. Don't really use it that much, but it's nice to have the option to have hot water. So when I was designing my kitchen galley, I spent a lot of time thinking about my personal habits and I wanted a large enough sink that it wasn't annoying to have to wash things. Like if things pile up, I wanted to be able to like work around it. So I always liked the clean look of an undermounted sink. Um, it was terrifying to install for somebody who's never done it before. Uh, but this size is absolutely perfect for me. Um, and then it just fits the nice aesthetic that I have going in here. Okay, so on this side, um, I guess the major feature would be a fridge, which it looks relatively clean right now. That's great. Um, I have my trash over here and then a couple just junk drawers essentially at the bottom where are trash bags, tools, etc. like that. And then like hot pad holders, like uh, wet wipes, things like that go in a tiny little drawer here. A lot of that was just to fill in space around the fridge and might as well put a drawer if you have the option. On the wall here is my control panel. I've seen some designs where you kind of hide that away behind a drawer, but I wanted to make sure that everything was accessible and easy to use. So I decided to make it a feature instead of trying to hide it away. So I have everything I need to control like the systems in here. I uh, see my water, um, tank levels, heater, um, your traditional inverter, battery monitor. Um, I have some extra buttons on here that do things. Um, I have a Wii Boost on um, roof that I can control via this. I, I wired it up so it's DC only, so I don't have to run my inverter to use it. I also have heated floors down the center. I'm from Wisconsin, so it gets cold and it's just 12 volt heating mats underneath there, like grooved into the subfloor. So it just makes it so it's not cold it doesn't really get it warm it just makes it comfortable so you can be barefoot when it's two degrees outside and then this bottom part here is a, a a side project that i started myself on when i started building this um i feel like lighting is very important in a space like this an unlit or poorly lit van feels very cramped so i just set out to design my own light controller so that I could have as many buttons to turn on and off lights as I want and then be able to create multiple zones for lights. So I have a bedside light that dims up and down when you turn it on 
and then you can hold down a button and they'll dim up and down so you can have really low light at night or really high light if it's bright outside and you want light in here. So something I'm very proud of, but it's a, definitely a work in progress. So I need to take this panel off quite a bit and rework things and stuff like that. So that's why there's a bunch of screws on this. So, so as far as my roof vent, I spent a lot of time thinking about where on the ceiling you want that located. And I opted just to put a single fan right in the center because I have an awning window and a side window so I can cross breeze from either direction. Upper cabinets, still organizing. This is one of my future to do's is how to organize these cabinets better. But I have like my camera equipment in one. It was an afterthought, but I needed a mirror in here. So I decided to use friction hinges and so I have things on the doors, so it kind of double duties. I have a computer cabinet that has the same thing going where eventually I want to do a touchscreen system up here so I can control everything via this, but that's definitely not done yet. <laughs> so I'm working on it. And so yeah, full my full desktop computer in here, and then there's like a lot of technology going on. Set up an entire DC powered computer system so I don't have to run my inverter to run a full desktop computer, which is this guy right here. This journey for me started, I'd say in 2015, uh, when my grandfather passed away. And it was the first time somebody really close to me, um, I watched them go. So, I, I described to people I had my 30s life crisis, where I was 30, I decided to pack up my apartment, um, put everything in the storage, and just drive west. Because supposedly, people find themselves and they do that. So I'm like, I, I could do that. So I was in a Mazda 3 car, and it was the trip of a lifetime. Uh, it kind of formed basically who I am now. So I was doing this whole road trip out of a car thing, and then, um, I met up with some friends for some camp, uh, camping weekend. It was a nice rainy weekend and there was a van there. I saw that van when it was only a bed platform and a makeshift countertop and I thought it was the most incredible thing. So ever since then it was in the back of my mind like, hey, could I do that? Maybe I should do that. And I think it was sometime in 2019 where I'm like, yeah, no, let's, let's make it happen. Like if you put your effort forward towards anything, you can make it happen. So I bought an empty van and then just got myself in so deep and that's where I find myself now. I set myself out with the task of seeing every national park you can drive to in five years. And so I, I joke around, it's not about me seeing the national parks, I have to show Vincent all the national parks. So I've been to a lot of them, but I have to go back so Vincent can see them. So it's, that's my goal for the next few years. When I first started building, uh, I had to prioritize what was important to me. And one of the most important things was my ability to work from the road. So this space right here is, a lot of things were designed around it. So I needed a full desktop computer and I wanted a monitor because uh, doing the work I do off of a laptop would probably drive me insane. So I, this is my uh, desk setup. I have an undermounted monitor arm, which I had to modify, drill some holes in it, flip everything around, but I have a full 27-inch uh, monitor, uh, and I can just sit down and, and work from here. I'm not sure if I'm completely set on it, but I have an undermounted Bose TV speaker here. Um, the one drawback to that is you have to have the inverter on to use it. Small price to pay for incredible sound. This upper cabinet is just a lot of my notebooks. Uh, it's almost like the everyday use junk drawer. And then the other bench sheet, everyone always asks, has uh, the Nature's Head composting toilet. Every van comes with a rear view mirror and traditionally they're completely useless. So I got a, a screen that goes over top of it that has three cameras so that I can see in front of me, behind me, and then inside and it's a dash cam. So I'm planning on being in this van for five years and visiting a lot of national sites, national parks, monuments, historic sites, etc. And so what I've been doing, I have this wooden panel that I made six of. And every year I plan on replacing it out. 
and it's good, it's my sticker board. So I have patches from all the places that I've gone and seen, and then every year replace it out so that someday I'll have a house where I'll put all six panels on a wall and you'll be able to see everywhere that the van is gone. Your sleeping area in a van is so crucial to get right. So I, up here, I have a queen short bed. Um, that short part just gets you back some extra room. Uh, and being a short person, my feet only kind of hang off the end. All of my clothes storage are in these two cabinets. I just have three shelves in here. Uh, it does get wrinkled because what can you do? But it's plenty of storage space in the two of them for everything that I need. When I built this platform, um, I had some room on the edge. So I have my nightstand over here. I was pretty happy I found a piece of walnut that was the full length. So it's the actual piece of the grain follows the whole way down. Nice little touch that makes me smile every single time I see it. I've seen a lot of vans with uh, the puck lights for lighting and I, I wanted something a little bit different and more like kind of hidden away. Um, so that's why our, I did this inline lighting strip built around the ceiling. And then I went through probably a dozen different types of LED strips to find the ones that looks as much like a solid line as possible. I would say the biggest like benefit to this lifestyle is uh, getting to be in the places everyone always say they dream they can go. Like for me, going to Olympic National Park is just another week. Um, where everyone's like, oh, I've always wanted to go there. I wanted to see that, I wanted to do that. You can just do that. If you set yourself up right, you can just do that every single day. I will admit though, being on the road for as long as I have, there are big peaks of happiness and then really low lows. Uh, there's a loneliness that comes with this. Um, it wasn't until I ran across some people on the Oregon coast where we got to hang out and kind of feel part of the community again. But next week, I'll be alone in a national forest for a week at a time. So there's those ups and those, those downs. And I, I really wish my partner could travel with me, but her job doesn't allow it. So uh, luckily, she's very supportive and truly encourages me to go through this adventure um, and she'll come and visit once a month anyway so she, she gets to go to really cool places without second thought. I think I was preparing myself for it but van life isn't magical. It is just normal life and I often will talk with friends back at home and they'll be like oh your trip must be great. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm not on a trip per se. I'm, I'm not on a trip. I'm just like out and about doing my thing every day. Uh, so there wasn't some magical moment where I'm like, ooh, I'm a van lifer now. It was just jumping right into it and then creating good habits. And yeah, it was just, it's just normal, I guess. This is my garage area. Um, I do have bug, uh, bug nets on the rear here and the slide door. After a few nights of leaving the doors open a little bit too late and just being swarmed by bugs, um, I felt that they were a necessity for me. So I've been extremely happy with these once they were installed. Uh, my garage area, I wanted to build around the fact that I can be lazy. And if there was something really far back that I didn't have access to, I would never use it. It would just be permanently there, just calling it around. So I splurged and decided to go with the full pull-out drawer. And then I was thinking about how to organize this to uh, work with my habits. So I, I put a center beam in here so I can have all my backpack stuff hanging because I'm a huge backpacker, love just going out for a couple days. So that way, instead of having everything piled up, it's easy just to pull off a bag, have hooks for everything, 
and they're just out of the way. On the other side is just a couple containers uh, of just extra food. I have a container for tools, built a little container for Starlink satellite so it can sit in here safe and then take it out when I need it. On one side of the vehicle, I have my electrical system, which was a very scary thing to do when I didn't understand electricity. But now that I've done it, you kind of learn and uh, it's not as complicated as it looks. Um, spent a lot of time wrapping and bending uh, connectors so that I hide away all the wires so that it has this nice clean look. And I do plan on putting a cover on it. I know this is not the safest, but uh, didn't have time. So this fall is when I plan on getting a cover to put over the whole thing. I have 400 amp hours of uh, Battleborn batteries with 760 watts of solar. And then I have the DC to DC charging for uh, the alternator. And I haven't had any issues with power, uh, running a desktop computer, like for full days at a time. So it's just about managing that properly and that's plenty enough. I have my water system on this side and have a four gallon hot water heater, um, the pump, filters, um, all the different shutoff valves, um, and then a couple of quick connect hoses. Uh, one here, one on the side door that I can connect into if I want water outside the vehicle. This one can do hot and cold, the other side could just do cold water. And then I put outlets for DC and AC on the back just in case. So with an outdoor shower, I didn't want, uh, I wanted a hands-free outdoor shower. So if you have like all soapy hair and then you have to use one hand and then you get soap everywhere. So I took a little foot pedal. So I have a solenoid on here and a quick connect hose so I can quick connect in to right here. and then outdoor shower. For a profession, I create uh, 3D animations, kind of videography, photography stuff. Um, this summer, uh, it just worked out that I get this, this summer free to do whatever I want. And so I've been um, taking my camera out and trying to capture the national parks when I go through them. Um, I have a really poorly maintained blog that I post stuff so people back at home can be like, hey, what's James up to? And then I can send them links and just like kind of speak to friends back at home uh, in a non-social media way. You know, at the end of the day, um, this whole van experience from like the start of building it to now be on the road has taught me that like if you put your mind towards something you can really accomplish it like even if it's not ideal um, make sure to keep hold of that vision and like just work towards it like even if it takes you five years like you can get it done this took me an extra year and a half than i was expecting but here i am doing exactly what i wanted to do um, sure it's not ideal nothing's perfect but like you i'm never going to regret putting in this amount of effort to get myself here yeah if you want to follow along um you can follow along at jamesandvincent.com um not a huge social media person so it's my way of creating my own little world for people to look at very pretty pictures thanks for coming and checking out vincent um hope he can inspire somebody else to take the same journey